to look at many of our urban centers today is to look at how badly we have neglected the importance of urban planning. In Season 8 of Daya, we visit the old urban centers of Luzon to see how our ancestors maintained a sense of order. One that created spaces for communities, their economic and cultural activities, their daily lives. Indeed, the entire fabric of a solid, united community. This is Season 8 of Daya. Halinat Dumayo, Doon po sa amin. Two towns in Laguna reveal how the residents deal with their heritage in the face of rapid urbanization. Their concern and concerted efforts have resulted in a balance between heritage conservation and the urgent needs of living in the present. Beyond the picture-perfect vistas, there is always this delicate balancing act that needs to be addressed. What does it take to maintain that balance? And how is this passion for preservation passed on from one generation to the next? We know Binyan for its association with our national hero, Dr. Jose Rizal. Beyond this cursory knowledge, there are stately ancestral homes and buildings that tell the story of a prosperous town, a dynamic social and cultural history. Dr. Bimbo Santa Maria devoted much of his time to spearheading the community efforts at preservation. In his last public interview before he passed away, he takes us on an engaging tour of Binyan's Heritage Street and the homes that still stand here. Today we're here at the Jacobo Gonzalez Street uh, where we'll find the Heritage uh, District of Pinyang where you will have and you will see the many old houses or bay na bato here in Binyang. So let me walk you through. At my back here actually is the Almeda House, one of the old structures of the old houses that you will uh, see here in Binyan. Here is one of the early houses, as you can see. Uh, now it's uh, made of uh, uh, yero, yung, yung bubong niya. I believe it used to be made of nipa. But as you can see in the structure, yung parang buttress sa ilalim. If you could uh, see that yung wall, ganyan yung mga houses. Before the big bahay na bato came, mayroon silang silong. But it's uh, very, very small. It's actually, hindi siya ginagawang galawan ng mga tao din. Pero yun lang second floor. So, the house is still intact. And this is the house of uh, the first uh, female justice, uh, Justice uh, Herman. On my left here, is the Mercado House. So as you can see in the house, it has this main door. And uh, now if you would knock here uh, with this, uh, there's a hole actually up there where, where they would uh, peep through and, and look up who is knocking at the door.
This is the Bailon House. You can see that structure na medyo giba. If you look at the structure of the walls, they're made of original adobe stones. Uh, this is the uh, Alberto Yaptinchay Macaria Ghana ancestral home. So this is one of the oldest houses in Binyang and the most original, I would say, in terms of the furniture. Meron tayong intersuelo or the mezzanine. Uh, the old bahay na bato would have this as the place where uh, people would entertain yung mga kasama, yung mga uh, farmers. Na dito lang nila ito in-entertain. And then, uh, the second floor of the house is, of course, where dun talaga nila in ang kanila mga bisita. You can see that uh, the steps are still made of the original wood. The planks are those kind of wood na malalapad. Typical stairs of a bahay na bato. As I've said, this is the original uh, furniture pa rin ng bahay. And these are the original owners of the house, the Yaptinchay Almeda Casas. So this is the dining area. So kalimitan po sa mga bahay na ito talagang mahahaba ang mga dining tables nila. So nung araw talaga kasi dapat sabay-sabay sa pagkain. Uh, of course the kabisera is an important part of the dining table. This is a small street that leads all the way to the river because as a young boy, Rizal would say that he would go to the river and pick up stones. One of the favorite pastime, I guess, of uh, our national hero as a young boy. I don't know why he would do that. These are original adobe stones. And this used to be a gate, this, this, this place here, which again, I would say, could have been the house of Tomasa Mercado. The popular lore about the young Jose Rizal throwing his slipper into the river did not take place in the Binyan River. The endearing anecdote has become enshrined in our minds. It takes Dr. Bimbo to clear that popular misconception as it takes us on the walking tour of Binyan's Heritage Street. This is not the Chinelas uh, River. <laughs> uh, the, 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 the loss of the sleeper, I think, was in Bapurtabo at the Laguna de Bai, in the lake, you know, where he could have lost. The... He was about seven years old at that time, yes, you're right. Uh, and since ipinanata siya ni Teodora Alonso to Our Lady of uh, Good Voyage in, in uh, Antipolo, no? kaya yun yung trip na yun eh, alam ko. His first trip where he lost one of his uh, uh, sleepers. The Binyan River, 
nevertheless figures very prominently in the history and development of the town. The river in most places in the Philippines at the time, siya pa rin yung parang prime na artery eh, for trade, you know, everything. We used to use the banka most often then. And the market of Binyang uh, actually is very near where they have all this trading also going on through the river. The river and the streets of Binyan shaped the ways in which houses were built. The architecture of the period, so lovingly preserved in the homes, shows the interconnectedness of the community and the private space. The Jacobo Gonzalez House is a personal favorite of Dr. Bimbo. Not just for the state of preservation and the museum it houses, but for the way traditional architecture shows us how life was lived, how economics, natural resources, even the social culture of the times dictated the use of private spaces. So here we have the Jacobo Gonzalez House. One of the most beautiful houses also here of Bahinabato here in Binyan. And uh, as you can see, there's the, there is the azotea. Itong mga lugar na ito in the old uh, structures, they are work areas. Ito yung labahan, igihiban. When you go up uh, the stairs, this is where you find the main house on the second floor. Uh, in most houses, they will have an antesala, which is where you find the furniture, eh? uh, where you receive people. This is the azotea, and as you can see, I was telling you, this is the place where they would work, yung mga labada and everything, uh, ito yung puli, and, and it leads all the way down to the, ano, ano, to, to the balon, you know, where for water, they fetch water. And I believe this is where the aljibe used to be, pero minodify na lang. Aljibe is a storage for water, so they catch the rainwater. So as you can see here, look at this. Meron siyang parang tanke na kung saan yung mga tubig galing dun sa bubong. It's where they collect rainwater because this is where they use uh, yung panglinis nila. So here at the back, you'll find the house where Rizal studied under uh, Maestro Senyano Aquino Cruz. talking a lot about Rizal, probably because uh, one, Francisco Mercado is uh, really from Binyang. It is uh, written there in the Book of Side. But not much has been written about Teodora alone. So uh, mostly it would be said that Teodora came from Santa Cruz in Manila. But uh, ang totoo niyan, uh, Teodora Alonso is from Binyang because the father, Lorenzo Alonso, is from Binyang and was mayor of Binyang in the 1800s. I think it was in 1844. Kaya si Rizal ay anak ng dalawang tiga Binyang.
In Pila Laguna, another type of ancestral house is found. These are chalet-type homes dating to the early 20th century. Smaller, less imposing, may not quite be the right words for these homes. Their charm lies in their intimate spaces and in the way these spaces connect to the life outside. The Rilova House is one such endearing example of that gracious interconnectedness. And Cora Rilova, co-founder of the Pila Historical Foundation, has made it her mission to draw attention to the ancestral homes of Pila and the history of her beloved town. And luckily, we don't have pictures of how the old houses looked like. And uh, probably they had sawali roofing and then wood, bamboo, but there were no uh, bahay na bato here. I think the bahay na bato existed in the old, in the old pila, in, the, in Pagalangan. So all the houses here were built during the American period. So they are considered American chalet. The Relova home is but the starting point for a look back at Pila's history. A history that goes back farther than the colonial era. Even before the Spaniards came, Pila was already a settlement headed by a Datu. And uh, this is evidenced by the Laguna Copper Plate, which was found in the Lumbang River, which mentions the town of Paila, and it mentions um, Jayadewa as being the head of Paila. So this is a settlement where they did commerce with the Chinese traders, and I think also Indian traders, and um, evidenced by the excavation sites, which was done in the 1960s, so they found all these exquisite patteries, even pre-Chinese patteries, dated like 10th, 11th, 12th century. So that means to say there was a civilization that lived there. The three Rivera brothers, um, they're like my ancestors, decided or proposed to move the town to their hacienda, Villa Santa Clara, which uh, actually took 10 years. So Felizardo Rivera, the eldest of the brothers, he drew the plan of Pila, which is now what we have here. It is what you call the Spanish colonial town planning. He donated the land for the town plaza. He donated the land for the church. And of course, around the plaza, you know, he reserved it for his clan, his relatives. So, Felizardo Rivera was considered the fundador de Nueva Pila, the founder of New Pila. La Noble Villa de Pila, or the noble settlement was a title bestowed by the Spaniards on Pila. It was in recognition of Pila's great antiquity and the traditions upheld by the people they had come to colonize. It is a title that the present-day inhabitants bear proudly as they continue to struggle for balance between the past and the present. Pila's most ancient connection is to the bodies of water that linked it to the great Laguna de Bay. From here, one sees the connection of the town to both lake and the mountains beyond. Connections that strengthen Pila's claim to being a town truly blessed, isang bayang pinagpala. We 
we are a town that surrounds the lake. And uh, from here, you can see the mountains, you can see the Sierra, Sierra Madre Range, and then you go around, and then you will see Mount Makiling, and then go down, go down, you're going to see Mount Cristobal, and the beautiful and spiritual Mount Banahaw. We're very lucky that, I mean, during typhoons, um, we are protected. We don't get, get a big brunt of the, of the rot of typhoon. In this area, during the afternoon when the sun is really shining bright and all, you can see the perfect sunset, which is for me comparable to the sunset of Manila Bay. And uh, this area towards the back is used for planting tomatoes and apalaya up to this area. And of course, raising ducks. What does it take to preserve heritage sites in both Pila and Binyan? Concerted efforts between local government and private individuals, surely. But while this can only go so far, it is the constant attempt to ingrain the importance of heritage among the young people of these towns that will be most effective in the long run. For the young kids, these houses, they're part of your landscape. You remove that and maybe suddenly they will be awakened. I can see that there's a lot of young people, young students, young tourists that take, I see them all the time, especially during weekends and during summer, they all come here, they take pictures of the houses, they pose in front of houses, they come from as far as Cavite, Pangasinan, so it's very heartwarming for us who started this foundation. Pangarap na namin ito, na itong mga bahay na ito ay ma-preserve, maglagay ng cobbled stone din dyan sa plaza to, to, to declare that as the heritage uh, district or heritage zone. Uh, napakahalaga kasi nitong mga struktura na ito sa kasaysayan because these are living, uh, you know, proof of our glorious past. And dito makikita uh, ng ating mga younger generation ang ating kultura, ang ating kasaysayan. We visit our heritage sites and come away marveling at how rich the past is. We look at the old structures. We are moved by nostalgia, by memory, by a curiosity for the past. But these structures wouldn't be here if it weren't for the very real struggles and efforts of modern-day individuals who devote time and energy to learning about the past. The learning does not stop with them. It is translated into a passion to preserve. Slowly, the uphill battle wins over many. They convince others. They reach out to government and civic institutions. They educate the young. I can think of no better way to link the past with the present and no better tribute to the efforts of heritage associations and the committed private individuals like Cora Relova and Dr. Bimbo Santa Maria. If towns like Pila and Binyan seem so respectful of the past, it is only because there are committed contemporary Filipinos who feel the need to preserve 
dayaw, our knowledge, our pride. 